Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about two more features of Spanning Tree, namely BPDU Guard and Root Guard. Now, both of these features are designed to protect against threats to the network. That's the first goal. The second one is both aim to increase network stability. Okay, so these are pretty straightforward features. We'll start off with BPDU Guard. Let's say we have a user connected to an access switch on our local area network. However, instead of connecting a PC, the user connects a different switch. Perhaps they need to increase the number of ports in their room because a lot of people need to get online. So they just take a switch and they just plug it in. Well, if this switch is running spanning tree and it has a lower bridge ID than the current root bridge on our local area network, then spanning tree is going to go ahead and enter the root bridge election process. Now, if this new switch becomes the root bridge, then we could have created a suboptimal performance on the network. We could have broken our design potentially. We may, na we may now have new traffic flows uh, on the network. Also, just by virtue of creating the root bridge election, it could be very disruptive to user traffic. We could have ports uh, changing states now, going from blocking to forwarding or forwarding to blocking. This could definitely be disruptive to our network. Now, what if this same user, though, isn't just unaware of what they're doing? They actually have malicious intentions. They want to cause trouble. Let's say they add this switch to the network, and it becomes the root bridge. And then they remove the switch. And then one of our existing, or the original, root bridge becomes the root again. And then this user adds the new switch again. And then removes it, adds it, removes it, keeps repeating this process. Each time we're going to get a new root bridge. So in effect, this user can almost create a non-stop root bridge election process. And this could be extremely uh, uh, disruptive to our network. Uh, severe interruption to network traffic for the same reasons as we talked before all these ports could be changing states what if we have a user who just doesn't really know any better and they connect a hub they're in let's say a room and they just want things to work they plug a bunch of PCs, in, PCs into the hub and then they plug the hub into as many jacks on the wall as they can again they just want it to work they don't care what's happening well, they could end up connecting two different access switches on our network. And this could actually create a physical loop on the network, and these two switches can now be exchanging BPDUs. And recall, we talked about port fast, so these ports involved, since they're user ports, will immediately become forwarding, so that we lose that safety of the forward delay times in the listening and the learning states. So this could be a big problem. We could have just introduced a, a severe loop on the network. Okay, so all of these scenarios are dangers that we face. And BPDU Guard offers a good solution to them. Well, quite simply, when BPDU Guard is configured, it will disable a port upon receiving a BPDU. So if switch A receives a BPDU on this, on this port connected to the hub, with BPDU Guard enabled, the port will be shut down, and it will no longer be able to send or receive any frames on that particular port. And so what we do is we enable BPDU Guard on a lot of user ports because we want to protect ourselves from all those scenarios we just talked about. Generally speaking, you want to enable BPDU Guard on ports that should never receive a BPDU, exactly like a user access port. Okay, so it's a pretty simple solution. If, if a BPDU shows up on a port and BPDU guard is enabled, we just shut it down. Now, root guard is going to protect our network uh, differently than BPDU guard. Let's say we have this simple network, and we, we've looked at something similar before. Switch A is our root bridge, and B and C are the two non-root bridges. But let's say we also have switch D on the network, and we don't want switch D to ever become the root bridge. Let's just say it breaks our design, it's a suboptimal switch, and it's just not a good candidate to be the root bridge. Well, if we enable root guard on this port, on switch C, root guard will ensure that this port can never become the root port on switch C.
So what does that mean? Well, in normal day-to-day -day operation, switches C and D can exchange spanning tree BPDUs all day long without any problems. However, if switch C ever receives a BPDU from switch D, which has a superior bridge ID in it, meaning it has a lower priority or a lower MAC address for the root bridge ID, switch C is immediately going to recognize that this could potentially cause a problem because it'll compare it with its current root bridge information and say, ah, switch D is giving a BPDU that's better than the current root bridge switch A. And so I'm going to immediately disable that port. In fact, it puts it in what is called a root inconsistent state. This is just similar to the listening state in spanning tree. In other words, no frames will, allowed, will be allowed to be sent or received on this particular uh, port while it's in this root inconsistent state. And so a root guard can be used to protect your network in just that way. If there are ever switches or segments that you want to make sure if you ever receive superior BPDU information from, you immediately shut it down. Okay, so in this way we can protect ourselves if somebody puts a rogue switch on the network trying to become the root bridge, or if we just want to make sure that we maintain our current topology as much as possible and not let switch A uh, be overtaken by another switch, then we can en enable root guard on certain ports on the network. So to summarize what we covered, we now know that if we want to block BPDUs from interfering with the network no matter what, we can enable BPDU guard. And this is commonly done on user ports. If we want to prevent a switch from ever having a certain port become the root port, then we would go ahead and enable root guard on that particular port. This means that if it receives a BPDU that has superior root bridge information to what is currently in place, that port is going to be turned down and no frames will be able to enter or exit that particular port. So we save our network. Okay, and so those are two ways to protect, protect your network, BPDU guard and root guard. Thanks for watching.